Hi guys, it's Miss Manning. Today we're going to be learning Module 5, Lesson 15, where we're learning to solve real-world word, word problems involving areas of figures with fractional side lengths using visual models and or equations. So again, a lot of words to just say we're doing word problems with area and we're going to have side lengths that are mixed numbers, fractions, whole numbers, all of that. Um, and remember our five steps that we use, we have to identify the parts in the whole first, then we have to draw and label our tape diagram, then we write and solve our equations, check your answer, or write your answer as a statement, and then check your answer for reasonableness before you are completed with it. Again, this is kind of a long video, so I suggest you sit down with the problem set, you try to work your way through the problems, and as you come across ones that you don't understand, or if you wanna check your answers, come back to the video and kind of scan through it and find the problem set problem that you're on. Good luck, guys. With problem set number one, it wants to know the area of a flower bed, um, but we, do, we don't know the length, but we know it's four times as long as the width. So the length is going to be equal to four times the width. We do know the width, that's 3 eighths of a meter, so what you're going to have to find out the length and then to find the area, you're going to have to take the length times the width. With number two, we have three different parts. So Mrs. Johnson's uh, garden has herbs and square plots. So square is important. It says that our basal plot measures five eighths of a yard on each side. So you need to find the total area. So we know the length and the width of that based on each side length. So you're gonna find the total area of just that basal plot. Then it says Miss Johnson puts a fence around the basal. So this is her basal right here. Um, but the fence is two feet from the edge of the garden on each side. So from the basal plot to here is two feet. And from the basal plot to here is two feet. So if we take our two feet plus what our basal plot is, which is five eighths of a yard plus our two feet on the other side, we end up with a total length here of four and five eighths. Same thing can be said of the width, which would be the two feet from here to here, then the basal plot, then two feet from here to here. So we have two plus our basal plot, which is five eighths, plus our two. So we get a total width of four and five eighths again. But the question is asking for the perimeter of the fence. So the area around the shape. So for us to do that, we have to take our length plus our length plus our width plus our width. Well, fortunately for us, this is a square, which means the lengths and the widths are the same. They're all four and five eighths feet or yards, I'm sorry. And we would need one, two, three, four copies of that. And then it wants us to find the total area. So you're just gonna take the length times the width. In this case, you're not making copies because we're not repeatedly adding it. We have to take that four and five eighths times four and five eighths. So for number three, Janet bought five yards of fabric um, they're two and a fourth feet wide. Um, this is actually the, the length right here, this five yards. But then over here, we're in feet. So we got to take our five yards and convert that to feet. So if one yard equals three feet, well, then five yards has to be 15 feet. So she actually bought 15 feet of fabric, and it was 15 feet long to an, a fourth feet wide. Um, and she used a third of that fabric to make a long set of curtains and then the rest to make four short sets. So if we picture like a tape diagram here, we're just gonna focus on those short set of, or of the long curtains, I'm sorry, where she made, um, only used a third of the fabric. So I'm gonna split this into thirds. Our hole here is our 15 feet. And she only uses this much of the total for the long curtains. So what is one third of 15? 
Well, that's 15 over three, which equals five. So the uh, length of the curtains is five feet. They're five feet long, but they're two and a fourth feet wide. So you're going to have to find the area of that. Then it wants the area of the fabric that she used for the short set. Well, this is the rest of the fabric, this right here. So I'm gonna bring this tape diagram, this part of the tape diagram down. And it says that she made four short sets. So we're gonna split that into four equal pieces. And the, the total here, if the total here is 15 and we took away five, we have 10 feet as our hole now for what's left over, the remainder. So we need to figure out what one fourth of 10 is. Well, of means to multiply. So that equals 10 fourths or two and two fourths or two and a fourth, or I'm sorry, and a half. So that would be, for these short curtains, that would be the length, two and one half, but then the width is still that two and one fourth. So you've got to find the total area here of the short sets. So we have three rectangles here, A, B, and C. And the only dimensions that we know for a rectangle uh, right off the bat is rectangle A, which is two by three and one fifth. So we're going to use that trick where we take our whole number times our whole number and then our whole number times our fraction. So we have six as a partial product and then the other partial product is two fifths. So when we put those together, our area for figure A is six and two fifths centimeters squared. And then we have rectangle B, and it says that the dimensions are three fifths larger than rectangle A. So that means it's not two anymore, it's two and three fifths. You just added three fifths to it. It's not, oops, not plus. It's not three and one fifth anymore, it's three and four fifths. So then we have to multiply those. Don't forget, we can always do that area model for multiplication. So if I take two and three fifths and I split them up, then I take three and four fifths and I split them up, then I'm going to take the length and the width, which is six, the length and the width, which gives me eight fifths, which is actually equal to one and three fifths. Then I have my length and my width, which gives me nine fifths, which is equal to one and four fifths. Then we have our length and our width. My numerators give me 12. My denominator gives me 25. So now I have to take all my partial products and add them together. So I'm going to look at these two first and add those together. I end up with two and seven fifths, which is actually equal to three and two fifths. And then I'm going to add my the rest of my fraction to it. 12 20 fifths. But I can't add my fractions together because they don't have the same denominator. So I would have to take this fraction times five, which gives me three and 10 20 fifths plus 12 20 fifths, which gives me an answer of three and 22 20 fifths. But we're not done because I still have that whole num number up there. So I have to add six to that, which gives me a total volume of nine and 22 20 fifths centimeters, not a volume, I'm sorry, total area of nine and 22 20 fifths centimeters squared. So that's my um, area for rectangle B. Now, if we go down to C, it says that C's dimensions are three fifths larger than rectangle B's dimensions. So I've got to take rectangle B and I've got to add three fifths to it before I get the length. 
So that's going to give me the length. And then I've got to take 3 and 4 fifths and add 3 fifths to it. And that's going to give me my width. So then I take my length times my width. The other thing to note is that it asks you for the total area. So you've got to find the area of A, B, and C and add those all together to give you the total area of those three rectangles made from the wire. So for question B, you're going to have to think about this in terms of perimeter. And remember, perimeter is the length plus the length plus the width plus the width. But don't forget you have um, three rectangles. So you're going to have to take the length and the width of rectangle A, add them all together, and then you'll have your total perimeter for A. Then remember B was one third bigger than the length here. And then you're going to find your perimeter for B. And then whatever side length you found for C, you're going to do the same thing. So you have your perimeter from C. So then you have three different perimeters. And what they're asking is, is 40 centimeters of coil enough? Or how much wire is going to be left over when you use it up to, uh, for the perimeter for all three of these rectangles? That's all I have for you guys today. Uh, good luck on your exit ticket, and I'll see you again soon.